MD for 40 years plus, and he also has another group of degrees, ND, and na uh, naturopathic medicine, and another, uh, he's a fellow associate uh, Association of Naturopathic Medicine, FANA, is another degree that he has. I heard about him seven or eight years ago when a good friend of mine, a chiropractor in Denver, told me, he says, boy, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'm going skiing with Dr. Leo Roy. And I said, who's Dr. Leo Roy? He says, well, he's, as far as I'm concerned, the walking encyclopedia of information, and he's from Ontario, Canada. He has spoken all over the world. He's been on many TV and radio talk shows. He's uh, lectured uh, for standard process in a lot of places. His uh, area of expertise is like a lot of our speakers. He could speak for two days or two weeks, and uh, we're here asking him to try to cram it into a 50-minute segment. But I know he'll do a great job, and we're real pleased that for the first time I can introduce Dr. Leo Roy of Toronto, Canada. After those very kind words, I sure am anxious to hear what I'm going to say. Everyone in this room is committing suicide, slow suicide, whether you realize it or not. If any of you would like to stop committing suicide, please stop breathing like right now. I'm sure you all realize that everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you breathe, all the negative thought patterns, negative attitudes, negative lifestyles, excesses, all your negative emotions, Anything that is not in harmon harmony with your nature is literally killing. Which one of us isn't doing that, including myself? Almost everything in civilization except God's nature kills. The preservatives, there's no such thing as a preservative, it's all embalming fluid. There are 3,000 chemicals in our foods, the fluorides you've heard about, which are devastating causes of cancer, arthritis, heart conditions, and many other problems. The, all the air pollutants, the fumes, the ions, the natural gas that we're heating our homes with, the medical drugs by the thousands, the industrial and the occupational chemicals, the, all, all the chemicals we use for our hobbies, all the synthetics, the radiation we're living with. Right now, with the claim that about th we have about three times the amount of radiation circling this globe that, that in the body can tolerate. <clears throat> All the chemicals in our cosmetics, the sprays, the aerosols, the home drugs, our microwave ovens, the pressure cookers and aluminum cookers, the, all, the, all the excesses of our foods we use, all the cigarettes, the alcohols, the kick drugs, on and on. <clears throat> then we've got all the toxicity from what we're re retaining in our body. If we're not eliminating as much every day as we we're putting in, then th those toxins and poisons stagnate and intensify their toxic action. Little thought here. People don't realize that you have to have three bowel movements a day minimum. The medical doctor says, oh no, one a day, one a week, that's fine. So if you have less stuff coming out of your body every day than what's going in, what's happening? Even the faulty exercise in our lifestyle prevents us from eliminating a lot of the toxins. All of the mineral imbalances and the hormone imbalances and the nutrient imbalances and the energy imbalances are all toxic. The failure to flush the poisons from our cells into the liver and whatever to get rid of them and the faulty function of the liver is toxic. There isn't a single person in this room, including myself, who's got a normal liver. You can't possibly live in civilization and have a normal liver, but all the living and all the functions of living are basically are done by the liver. <clears throat> you know or you should know all these, but I want to talk about some toxins today, I've just gone very quickly here, that I believe are maybe a little less aware, we are a little less aware of them, and are more, in some ways, are more important, more insidious, and just as damaging. 
Some of these are your mind toxins to, to get into the slowly, the pornography, the agnosticism, the skepticism, our low self-image, our fears, our angers, our hatreds, our jealousies, our de approval dependencies, we need others to approve of us, our prides, all of these negative attitudes are just as toxic. The mind is far more powerful than the body, far more powerful than even most of the chemicals that come into the body. We concentrate an awful lot on chemicals, we're still in the age of chemistry, and sometimes we belittle the effect of what our mind is doing to, to help us commit our suicide. Let me give you a little example that I've heard once, and I, I believe this story even though I don't, I don't suspect that it's very scientific. It is said that if you were to, to put a needle inside the body of a person and, and take out about, shall we say, 10 cc's of fluid of a normal person, normal conditions, and inject it into a dog, the dog will walk away. If you go into a person who is in a state of anger, severe negative emotions, fears, anything that is intense, anxieties, and take that fluid out and inject it into the dog, the dog will drop dead. That's, I believe, illustrates better than anything the effect of uh, our attitudes, our emotions, our mental states of mind. We can also commit suicide by all our failures to nourish ourselves with all the nutrients, not just foods, but the emotional nutrients, the mental nutrients, the spiritual nutrients, and uh, even our morale nutrients. Anything that is missing can help to commit suicide. Now, getting into what I, I want to lead up to, I believe there's another thing that is missing in our attitudes and our philosophy towards health that is just as wrong. It's our wrong thinking in health, a lack of a philosophy, a lack of a, basics, a basis for the principles of healing. I'm not talking about wrong here, in other words, of, in, in, in the words rather of always that everything we believe is an is error, but I believe there's an awful lot of wrong in that it is oversimplistic, over-exaggerated, and confusing. Now, you, you should know, I'm sure you know what confusing means. I'm wondering if there's one of you in this room, every time you pick up a health book, by the time you finish it, you're all confused all over again. Now, I sure know I was. When I started, it took me about seven or eight years to try and figure out, my golly, where is the clear understanding in this whole mess of all these health books? And this morning, I, in trying to f see if I could think of something that might be of little value to you, I thought I'd go back to the very first problem that I'm sure we all encounter is our confusion. Where is the right? Where is the wrong? How does it all fit together? <clears throat> I also remembered an experience in this, not just the health book confusion, but the confusion between professions. And I remember when the medics decided to persecute me at one time and put me out of business for about 10 years, I kept asking myself, why is this happening? This doesn't make sense. I remember my medical thinking, that what I was taught in medical school, I remember, and I look at now where I've changed my thinking all over. Okay, there's a big radical uh, change, but it's not opposite, it's not contradictory. Why are we not communicating? And for several years, I pondered and I couldn't find any answer. How can you build a bridge? You got two people, they're not way this far apart, we're this far apart with this huge chasm of the uh, infiltration of the drug companies <coughs> and the establishment, which I usually pronounce establishment. <coughs> uh, why can't we build a bridge across these cliffs? And one day I hit on an idea. I think I know an answer, and that's the answer I want to share with you today. It's the answer of the world inside the living cell. <clears throat> without that world inside, without that knowledge inside the living cell, we're all floundering. Is this answer right? Is that answer right? Like take the, the health books versus the establishment thought. White bread is evil, one says. The other one says it's perfectly good. Sugar is evil, sugar is good. Uh, milk is good, milk is evil, uh, everything in the health stores is perfectly healthy. No, there's a lot of junk and a lot of fraud in the health stores. Drugs are good, drugs are not good. <coughs> refined foods are good. No, there's no difference between refined foods and the other. 
we, the word natural means automatically perfect, and the other, the other side said, well, not at all. There's, you can get as much fraud in the use of words natural and organic as you can anything else. Um, how, how about all these vitamins? Vitamins cure everything. Medical profession says vitamins don't cure anything. What about all things like chelated minerals? Is one vitamin better than the other? Uh, why are the medics not using vitamins when all the research in vitamins is done by medical research? Uh, what about things like uh, uh, are there, are some of the fringe type of medicines, you know, like I'm thinking in one story here, like of color therapy. And <clears throat> And just to digress for a minute, let me just tell you my first little story of color therapy. I was in Germany visiting a doctor over there, and uh, I knew nothing about color therapy, and I was very still learning about these things. And I didn't believe in that sort of thing, not one cotton picking bit. And a patient walked in while we were talking, and the doctor took this patient into the back room, which was totally blacked out, so that no light could get in. Turned on an arc lamp, put a piece of dark blue glass, and put this patient in front of it. The patient had an abscess tooth. And the abscess had a big swelling on the cheek. Lots of pain, lots of fever, lots of discomfort. Shined this arc lamp through this cathedral uh, uh, window type the dark blue glass. And 10 minutes that patient walked out, no pain, no fever, no discomfort, no swelling. Which antibiotic in the world will do that? But the medical profession still says it doesn't exist. Why can we, and how can we keep saying this? This is just one, trying to get one little story to, to show the point. <clears throat> how valid, go to go back and continue my thought, how valid is all the research on vitamins? Do all these, this research live up to the claims they're supposed to be, and do the vitamins really cure, cure permanently, cure per, uh, as perfectly as it should? What about all the cures that are around? What about all the cancer cures? The Gerson cure and the lateral cure and the Hoxie cure and the minor cure and the Rife cure and then this cure and the grape cure and, and everything else. Confusion. What, where is it? How does it fit? And there is good in all these, but where the error is that I believe is that there, there is a lot that's missing. There's no such thing as a complete cure or a complete um, uh, magic bullet. <coughs> So all the reading of the health books that you're, you're reading and all these books that you're reading about all these systems, as far as I'm concerned, unless you've got some basic philosophy, some basic guidelines to go by, will leave you more in a mess than leave you intelligent. <clears throat> there is an answer. The answer that I believe is there is a world inside the living cell. If you go back to the cell itself and say, what does the cell tell you? What does nature tell you? Like, let me give you a simple example. People say, milk is the greatest food in the face of the earth. Other people say, for God's sakes, never ever touch milk. Some people say, honey is a horrible food because it contains sugar. And others people say, hey, it's one of the most perfect foods there is, which I happen to believe. Who's going to decide the difference? How can you believe that I'm right? How can you believe that someone else is right? So I believe the way that I always use my decisions is this. What does nature say? What does the cell say? So if I go back to nature, and like in the case of the milk, just to give an example, do you ever see an animal that ever touches milk after it's weaned from his mother's breast? No. Maybe nature's trying to tell us something. Is there anything in nature that can completely live and sustain itself and in its entirety on such a thing like honey? Well, of course there is. The bees do. So maybe the bees are trying to tell us something. So I don't believe in books. I don't believe in philosophies enough. I don't believe in medicine. I don't believe in natural healing. I don't believe in anything unless it is confirmed by and is in agreement with what nature is trying to tell us. So today I want to pass a few, a few, through, con few through a few concepts <coughs> of what the living cell is. Now, I know you wouldn't be here if you knew all these answers. If you weren't confused, it would, why would any of you want to come here? So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to help you to go away feeling a little bit more comfortable. <clears throat> so let's talk about the cell for a little bit.
The cell is the basis of everything. And I'm, I'm going to try and use uh, little drawings here. Whoops. And there are about, there are several trillion of those cells in every one of your bodies. Several trillion. In each one of those cells, there are several hundred thousand or uh, molecules or different type of molecular structures. Probably the atoms are probably several million or trillion atoms or molecules. And that is the basis of your health. Now in that cell, you've got all kinds of structures. You've got the, the, the nucleus. I'm going to go very quickly. And you've got the chromosomes, all different types of shapes and sizes. They're basically about 48 pairs. Then you've got all kinds of what we call organelles, like mitochondria and, and different multiple structures. I'm not going to go into the details. It takes several weeks. And in that cell is contained all of the health of the human body. Now, let me, uh, that's an oversimplistic statement. And some of you are going to say, well, just a minute, it's not that simple. Sure, we know that there can, you can have structural problems. You can, like, for instance, when you throw a spine out of kilter or have a fracture or, or a dislocation or something like that, and uh, a lot of the illnesses are, are uh, cured merely by putting those the structures back to normal. Basically, what I'm limiting my thought here to is all those so-called incurable, so-called incurable diseases. There is no such thing as an incurable disease. There's only incurable people. There are hundreds of thousands of those around. Now, the incurable disease is because we haven't found out why they're incurable. We haven't found out what the nature of the disease is or what is going on in the body that causes it, what's, what's happening to, to keep the person in a, in a disease condition. And the chronic degenerative diseases have to go back to the living cell. We have to go back to the hundreds of thousands of molecules in there. Now, just to summarize the basic things, the structure of the cells is made up of proteins, amino acids. They're essential ones, and they're ones that the body can manufacture itself. The, this structure is fortified or strengthened by minerals. This structure, as this structure has functions. The functions of the cells are performed. Every function in the body, bar none, whether it's thinking, feeling, uh, growing, breaking down poisons, repairing, no matter where, what one of the hundreds of functions you think of the body, every single one is done by enzymes. It's not me that's saying that. It's a cell that's saying that. But there's a problem with enzymes. Enzymes are very, very slow, sluggish functioning chemicals. There's not nearly enough stress made in enzymes. And maybe some of you may have missed the importance of it because this is overshadowed by all our writings about vitamins and minerals as if the whole world depended on vitamins and minerals. <clears throat> the enzymes are like, a, like a, an, an automobile with a gas pedal where nobody's pushing the pedal on. You start the engine and the car goes about one or two miles an hour down the, down the road and you'll never get between to here to New York and an automobile if you don't put your foot in the gas pedal. The enzymes are like gas pedals. They accelerate, they activate, they produce all of the functions of the body. Everything works. I'm, I'm, I said the word wrong. They do all the functions. The accelerator, the, the thing that presses the pet gas pedal down, are vitamins. Now, if you look at any book, I defy any of you, look at any physiology book, any chemical book in the world, and they will tell you there's only one function for each one of these things. One function for a vitamin. All that the vitamin does is accelerates and speeds up the activity of an enzyme. There is no such thing as a vitamin ever curing any disease whatsoever in the face of the earth. It never has and never will and never will be able to. You'll never be able to cure most of those, those diseases without the vitamins, but it has to function together with the enzymes. <clears throat> 
And anybody who sells you a vitamin pill that says it's going to cure you of something, that person is a faddist or a fraud. This is, one of, this is the reason why the medical profession don't use them. And the medical profession is right. When you had several hundred thousand doctors using vitamins until they were coming out of the ears when they were first discovered and claimed to be the miracle drugs of the century, and they used it on tens of millions of people, and that every doctor, after giving these vitamins to all these people, after six months, a year, two years, the people came back, and every one of their diseases that was so-called cured was right back again as soon as you stop taking the vitamin. We realize that all chemicals, whether it's a vitamin or a mineral or no matter what it is, are like aspirins. They do the job as long as they're in the body, and, as soon, and if they're not completely natural and cannot be absorbed inside the cell, always a cell, then the body eliminates it as fast as possible and your headache comes right back again or your disease comes right back again. There's no difference between a pure isolated refined, or don't care how natural, how organic, if it's pure isolated refined vitamin or mineral, it's the same as an aspirin. That cell tells us that, not me, don't believe me. Okay. So the functions are performed of the, en the, the en vitamins and enzymes, but the enzymes themselves are made up of two ingredients. They're made up of trace minerals and back to your amino acids. The composition of enzymes and the composition of chromosomes are identical, the biochemistry of both. So if I say the enzyme structure, the function of it, I also have to say the chromosomes. So the structure of, of chromosomes, the basic structure of the cell is basically proteins and minerals, but the st structure of the amino, the chromosomes itself is special proteins and some minerals, but particularly your trace minerals. <clears throat> then you've got factors in the body that protect. Protect the body from damage, protect it, maintain its integrity, keep up the immunity. Maybe it would be better if I put immunity in here, because immunity is protection. Those are oils. I was delighted about a couple of years ago to finally see that the health industry finally put out a book on oils. I, to my knowledge today, there's still only one book. There are many, there are probably many booklets. But I would say that oils in your body and in your diet is at least a thousand times or a hundred times more important than all of your information about vitamins. And hardly anybody knows anything about oils and all the patients I see, hardly anybody, anybody pays any attention to them, hardly anybody keeps them from going rancid, hardly anybody does anything about oils. Oils are the raw materials that the body makes hormones from. The whole balance of the body is by hormones. <coughs> there are seven basic glands, each one producing a number of hormones. I don't even know whether, we, whether we, research has revealed all of those hormones yet, believe it or not, even in this age of science. But uh, those seven groups of hormones literally control hundreds and hundreds of thousands of chemicals in the whole body. Everything is maintained in balance, biochemical balance, by hormones. You don't have hormones without good quality oils. Let's go back to the cell. <clears throat> Let's see how some of these things fit. In your membrane of your cell, you have an inner layer of oils. That inner layer of oils protects those cells from absorbing any single molecule that is not absolutely identical as the original molecules that were in that cell. Now, that should be obvious and it should be important to realize, if the body could start changing the molecular structure that your cells, gradually you would start changing your nature. You'd gradually start changing from Joe Blow to Jim Blow or Mary Blow or something like that. You would start being a different person. The integrity of your cells is maintained with exactly the same molecular structure from the day you're born to the day you die, barring illness, of course. And what keeps that there is the protective mechanisms of the, of the cell membrane. You want to absorb foods into the cell membrane, there's a, there's a little revolving doors. And these doors swing around like this. So a molecule wants to come into the cell, 
it attaches itself onto that little revolving door, which is an amino acid or a protein. And the, it attaches itself onto one side that swings around and carries it in and takes out, a, a, takes out some of the uh, toxic minerals that have, have been released. Now, I just said something. What about toxic minerals? I have to bring all kinds of aspects in here. It may be a little confusing for a minute, but try and bear with me because I don't know how to put the living cell together in, a, in the sense that everybody can understand it because I don't understand it. I don't think anybody completely does either, so please bear. Okay. <coughs> the <coughs> this is the, but I want to bring in one question here about minerals. Have you ever asked yourself why every day you have to keep in taking in the foods that contain minerals? Why can't you just use the minerals over and over and over again that are in the body? Why do you keep dumping huge amounts of minerals and then replacing them every day? Doesn't make sense, does it? Not if you think in terms of chemistry. And this is why you've got to think in terms of the living cell, not chemistry, the living cell. The answer is very simple. The minerals that we have to, t have to take into our body have to be alive. And that is probably the final, the most important aspect of the, the cell that we have to keep in mind. <clears throat> chemistry disregards life, doesn't matter what kind, as long as it's chemical. Doesn't matter what kind of amino acids, what kind of food, as long as it's chemical. You eat foods for chemistry, you eat them for the vitamins you get, the minerals you get, the proteins you get, the sugars you get, the calories you get. This is the one thing I missed out here, one part of the life force is energy, and that is supplied, obviously, by your calories or your sugars. Carbohydrates. And that is a picture of the living cell. Now, all of those things have to be supplied, but let me get back to this one point of the minerals just to give you an example of how, where we have such misconceptions in our, in our way of thinking. <coughs> the, set, the, molecule, the minerals that we take are alive when they contain electrons. Getting back to the, the life force of molecules. The minerals that come in dump their electrons, which provide electronic and they provide magnetic energy. And the body dumps the cells, dumps those minerals after they have left their life force and their energy and their electrons in the body. So we dump dead minerals and have to take live minerals. Now that's a message that the cells are giving us. We're not paying any attention to those messages. We're saying minerals, minerals, doesn't matter. You go to a company and says, look, we got the best minerals in the world. We got chelated minerals and, and the best kinds you can get. They're all mined. They don't tell you whether they have the electrons or life force in it, but no, it's got this, this label, 100 milligrams of zinc, 50 milligrams of that. Little the cell says, excuse the expression, but I'd like to be real vile or something like BS, excuse the expression. But the cell says, I will not take that. I am going to use my protective mechanism and there's no way in the world that I'm going to absorb that kind of product. Either I get it the way nature gives it and God intended or I don't want it. Then we wonder why we have degenerative disease. <clears throat> the cell is the final criteria and the final judge of what makes health and what else doesn't make health. The cell is like a medical doctor. Anything that is not in harmony, or does not it completely conform to medical thinking is quackery. And so are the, all of the foods and the so-called nutrients and the pills and the supplements and whatever that is that we put into our body that are dead. And anything that you put into your body that is dead intensifies dying of the body, intensifies civilized suicide. I don't care how wonderful chemically what, what company is made from. <clears throat> Either you get your supplements and you get what your body needs in the form that nature provides, in a live form, in a form that's capable of sustaining life, or stay away. My personal belief is that the vitamins do more to cause cancer than they ever will to do to improve anybody's health. Not because the theories are wrong, but the form is wrong. It does not fit in with what the cell wants and does not provide all completely what the cell needs. So how, who are you going to believe? Me, the health books, the medical books, the research sciences, or what? There's no way that I can prove I'm right or anybody else is right. There's only one proof that I know, and that's the living cell. And, I'm, and if it makes sense, that we should go back to that. 
And I feel that if you were to keep this concept in your thinking, in everything you read and everything you do, you will keep a skeptical and, a, and a, a sane and a stabilized state of mind and not just go overboard because some advertisement says, hey, use this or use that. I'm going to give you another example. The most common thing today is distilled water. Yeah, you don't have any choice in America. You can't put all the poisons of food and uh, of, the, of the polluted waters and of all of the fluoridated waters and all of the chemicals in the water and industrial pollutants going there. You can't afford that. You've got to get rid of them, even if you get rid of everything else. But the cell says, hey, I can't do it that way. I need something else. So there's a simple little trick. You listen to the cell and say, okay, what does a cell need? Why do we have waters this way? Well, one of the most difficult things to get into the cell in the human body, one of the things most absent of all is minerals. Where can you possibly get minerals? Is there something that provides all the minerals that is in the human body? Yeah, sure, of course there is. The ocean. The mineral content and the mineral formula of ocean water is absolutely identical to the mineral formula of your blood. The only difference is concentration. So change the concentration. Put a teaspoon or two of, of raw, uh, uh, crude sea salt back into your distilled water, and fine. There's no problem anymore. But just taking, taking distilled water and leaching some of the minerals out of the body when the thing that's already the most lacking in the body is minerals, you can't do this because a distiller or a, a chemical company, whatever, says, here, this is the best answer I know. It's not what the companies know, it's what the cell knows. <clears throat> so as you can see, basically, where we have a real problem in our thinking, there is no philosophy like this taught in medicine. This kind of philosophy is not taught in naturopathic colleges. It is not taught in, taught in chiropractic colleges or osteopathic colleges or massage colleges or reflex colleges or kinesiology colleges or any other colleges. So we're all kind of floating in midair. We're still living on the basic principles of, uh, of basic coming from the age of ignorance. We are still living on the basic principles coming from the age of ignorance. For thousands of years, medicine has meant recognize a disease here is a magic bullet for it. Find it. Disease, cure, disease, cure, disease, cure. No. First of all, there is no disease. There is no such thing as cancer or arthritis or multiple sclerosis or any other disease that you know. There are only people who have those diseases. And why I'm saying a statement that sounds stupid, there is no disease, it's because in every single individual that has that disease, the particular changes inside that living cell in each one of them changes enough to the point that there's never two people that have the disease in the same way. So how can you say there's a stereotype disease? The disease is individual. And it's a cell that tells you the disease is individual. If you look on the outside of the body, it, you know, you all, everyone's got tumors, everyone's got this, everyone's got certain symptoms, and so we categorize them. But that's not fair, because the only way you're going to cure that disease is to go back to that cell and say, in individual A, which one of those molecular structures has changed? Which one is deep? Where, where are the deviations from normal? What about the energy levels? What about the patterns? What about everything the cell needs? Because only when you have everything there, you have health. And that's what the word, I don't know if you realize, but that's what the word health means. It means whole. It means total, it means complete. It also means in balance. It also means alive. But always, those are parts of wholeness. And to say that you have cured a disease or to made the person healthy when you've only done part of what that person needs does not make sense. The five, ten minute visit the, at an office, who can understand that literally, we're not, well, let me, let me just digress for a minute. The, the stage that we're at in trying to understand disease, when I say we, we are a small little research group that are trying to see if we can't come up with some of these answers. And we feel now that it's necessary to get something like 20,000 pieces of information about a person before you have the basic 
just broad guidelines of disease. Try and get that in five minutes. Our, our whole concept of medicine and healing is ridiculous. <clears throat> so basically we have to go back to the living cell. The, uh, getting back to our course, to give you an example, uh, and the medical um, treatment when you have disease and uh, a magic bullet to cure it. You know, like, to give you an example, infections use antibiotics, which are nothing but bug killers or uh, bacteria killers. Tumors, the answer to tumors is kill, cut, or cauterize, which is radiation. Pain, you got pain killers. Every disease is kill. I'll never forget the day in medical school when I first, we first started studying pharmacology. And the doctor started telling about this drug and that drug and the other drug. We've gone a little bit beyond this now, but it's still a, a big part of medicine. And I sat there and scratched a few more hairs out of my head and I said, Doctor, are you saying that in order to cure the disease, you've got to poison the person? And this uh, eminent professor of pharmacology said, yes. It doesn't make sense. He said, what we do is that you put enough specific poisons into an area where the disease is that the body gets fighting mad and tries to throw off that poison and mobilizes all its healing forces to do that and in the process of, of throwing off that poison, it's going to throw off the other poisons. Wow. But that still is the base of medicine. You'll say, well, we don't do that in natural medicine. No. In naturopathy, you have a disease, and you use a herb to cure the disease, or you use a homeopathic remedy to cure the disease, or you use an energy force, or uh, ultrasound, or electricity, or magnetism, all which are good if you'd like, but it's still disease versus magic bullet. In chiropractic, you've got a problem, so <clears throat> the problem is you, you do a manipulation or you stimulate a nerve thing, it's another magic bullet. <clears throat> I'm not being totally critical of these things because some of these magic bullets by years, centuries of experience are very wonderful. But wonderful isn't enough. What does the living cell say? You've helped me partly. I want to be helped completely. And the only way you can do that is by going back and trying to find out what the living cell needs. <coughs> <coughs> You have the same thing on the mental level. A psychologist comes up and says, okay, you've got a mental disease. Here is a counsel for you. You go into religion, and sometimes, I'm not being critical here, maybe as much as I sound, but we sometimes have pat answers for religion. <clears throat> In order to get down to all, to, uh, to answer all these things, we have to get down to the cell. Now, where did we go wrong? How did all this start? And this is one of the key points that I want to get across to you. <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, something like in 1870 or so, there was a chemist by the name of Ehrlich, and he sent... <coughs> the I don't want to choke on these. <clears throat> he, he synthesized a drug. Now, what was the basic philosophy and thinking of that? This, as far, to the best of my knowledge, for, cent for centuries and centuries, doctors have been saying, if we give this kind of chemical or drug, this disease gets cured. If we give this kind of a herb or natural remedy, it also cures diseases. Therefore, in the herbs, there must be a specific single element that is responsible for curing that disease. And that was the conclusion they came to, and that's the conclusion the drug companies are still working with, something like 120 years later. And the cure is literally a magic bullet. There has to be a magic bullet for every disease. There has to be a single chemical. We, we, can, go, we can go into nature somewhere. We can go everywhere. We can go into chemical labs. We can isolate and develop these chemicals, and these chemicals are supposed to cure. We know now this is wrong. It isn't a single chemical. It is a single combination of factors that are essential to bring about answers. Now, there's two ways of looking at that. 
One of them is in, is there in every disease, the, in every, I'm sorry, in every chronic, degenerative, serious, long-lasting disease, there are always a multiple causes. How can any one treatment, no matter how perfect or imperfect, handle multiple causes? I'm thinking here at the moment of a patient that I had, uh, one of the, maybe the most complex patients I had, who after spending several hours, and, after, and after this patient had already spent about 10 to 15 hours answering questions on paper, a quick long questionnaire, so literally there's been about 20 hours of trying to accumulate information on this patient. We had 54 causes of this person's cancer. Now, how is it possible to have a cancer cure? There never was, there never will be. It is ridiculous, it's impossible. There are only cures for cancer patients. There never will be cures for cancer. And the cures will always be multiple. We'll always have to respond completely and eliminate all the causes. Now, that is one of the answers. But now the other, the other multiple answer is, again, that which is uh, mentioned by the living cell. <clears throat> Simple example. And there are companies that are now saying this. I believe there's a company in New York that has challenged most of the vitamin companies and saying every one of you vitamin companies are a fraud because science now has enough answers to know, and this is what I want to share with you, that you do not have a vitamin that works alone. As I explained to you, you can't have an enzyme that works alone. As I mentioned, the enzymes are always combined with trace minerals. and amino acids, and all of these actually work with our oils. There is no such thing as a nutrient ever curing the body unless it's a combination of all of those factors put together. It has to be alive. Let's put the other thing in there, the life force in there. And anything less than that is fatism. I'm leaving out one point. One of the most important causes, the most greatest discoveries in medicine was the atom bomb. And you've already heard this several times at the meetings because the atom bomb told us something about the living cell. There is no such thing as matter. I'm repeating what you've already heard. Every bit of matter I like to, I like to, for this my purpose of my presentation, I like to change a word that's already used. Every bit of matter is condensed or compacted energy. You can call it light. I agree, it's perfect. Light is energy. So why are we talking about chemicals? Why are we talking about vitamins? Why are we talking about uh, uh, everything in terms of chemicals like the last 2,000 two years? Why are we still looking for bi magic bullets? Without the life forces, without the energies in there, you do not have cures. Now, <clears throat> there's another point that goes even beyond that. And this is a recent discovery for me. It was given to me. There's a doctor in Switzerland who worked met 20 years with uh, Paul Nehans in uh, cell therapy, cell injections. And he decided to look at the embryo and the fluids that the embryo secrete. I'm not going to go into details now. Uh, this will be held over for the workshop, if you like. But it's the most fascinating concept that there is. During life, with all the stresses and strains and chemicals and radiations and pressures and overwork and excesses and malnutrition and deficiencies and on and on and on, the body loses its ability to cure itself. But one of the things it loses is it loses the plan to cure itself. What do I mean by plan? Like, okay. You want to build a Ford car. You bring in millions of parts, and you put them in the right places in the factory. You bring in all your best workers and technicians and engineers and say, good, now make a car. Sure, where's the plans? Uh, don't have any. That's what happens in the body. We have assumed for, for a long time that if we can find the things that are lacking in the body, the vitamins and minerals, the proteins, amino acids, the oils, everything's lacking, you put that back into the body, the body's automatically going to cure. For most people it will, as long as they haven't burned themselves out, then we wonder why are we having this tremendous amount of failures? Because the coding has gone. 
And there's no way in the world all of these vitamins and minerals and nutrients and everything else you put in the body will ever cure a lot of these people. So you have the incurable diseases. The, the coding is contained in the fluids that are manufactured by embryos. And they are taking embryos uh, from the uh, animals in Switzerland and found out that these embryos manufacture little wee small cysts or sacs of fluid. And they're taking those fluids and putting them into vials and to put, like, letting people take these. And all of a sudden, the coding is back and each cell knows exactly where to go in the body and how to be restored and function. And healing starts to take place again. Nutrition is not enough. There's no such thing as any system of medicine being complete or adequate. You have to get it all. You have to get the coding. You need the life force. You need all the nutrients. You need the hormones. You need the balance. You need the, the, the contr uh, control in every way and form. <clears throat> now, I'm just about out of time here. I wanted to mention just one little story here, but one of the things that give me great satisfaction in my practice, talking about energies, you know, things like ultraviolet light, like was said the other day. And I want to mention this because some of my patients have found the greatest satisfaction coming into my practice when they got ultraviolet light, especially the women, because they would go home and tell their husbands how wonderful it was coming to Dr. Roy's office and getting ultraviolated. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, let's go back to one final point. Therefore, after all this, what is a poison? What is a toxin? We think that poisons have to be something like arsenic or cyanide or something like that. No, anything that is incompatible or incomplete or excessive or throws a cell out of balance, since a cell that always gives the answer, is a toxin or a poison. And therefore, you determine by the, from the cells what it is that they need. Now, that, that isn't hard to understand. You take five platesfuls of the best organic meal that you can possibly think about, you're going to be sick as a dog. You take a dose of arsenic, you're going to be sick as a dog. Let me add one little point. You know how arsenic kills? Because this is the way all drugs work. Arsenic combines with an enzyme, phosphatase. And in the process of combining that enzyme, it interferes with a whole series of chain reactions where the body breaks sugar Stage by stage, molecule by molecule, breaks it down like having a great big stone and putting it through stone crusher and making smaller stones and smaller stones and smaller stones and finally down to gravel and finally down to molecules that the cells can use for energy. You interrupt that cycle with loss of one enzyme and the body cannot use sugar to make energy and dies. Okay, I thought you'd like to know how most poisons and toxins and drugs work. So anything that's incompatible to the, uh, to the cell is a, a drug or a poison. <clears throat> How do you determine all this? The only way that I know, there's so much information required to understand the cell and the whole structure is the computer. There's no way, there's no man, there's no profession, there's no group of the most brilliant scientists in the world can possibly contain or understand or know all of the knowledge that is involved in the human body, the human mind, <clears throat> and inside the living cell. So we have to go back to something way beyond man. As far as I know, and I've said this for about 25 years, I don't believe we will ever practice medicine. We will ever get back to all the causes of disease. We will ever help people get back to total health, total optimal living, optimal life optimal health until we have all of the answers necessary and that is in the computer. Now, I could go on for hours. My time is getting close to the end. I'm going to leave you time for, for some questions. Uh, I have about 50 more pages of information I could give you. Uh, so I'm, go I'm offering to give, try and handle most of this in the workshop. So <clears throat> if any of you feel that uh, you'd like to go on, then I would suggest that uh, what we'll try and give in the workshop is talk about degenerative diseases, talk about cancer and AIDS and heart diseases, talk about diagnosing, how do you handle the toxicities and the attitudes and the ecology and the lifestyle and the stress, the allergies and life reserves and the, the uh, state of every organ in the body and all of the thousands of deficiencies and the nutrition, the diet and the life forces and all this, this it is possible. And I have here just as one little illustration. This is one of the ways that we use for doing this. This is 3,000 questions, and out of this 3,000 questions that put through a computer, we got about 20,000 pieces of information. 
the number of sections that we, we analyze, we feel have to be analyzed to have a good o oversight or insight in the human body is just listed. It took this huge page just to list all the different sections that you need to know about a human body before you really feel that you can do something to help that person to cure their disease. And then final, there's one more final t answer to all this that I'd like to add to the conclusion that the greatest of all of these things is still the joy of living. Joy is the greatest healer. Joy is the guideline that tells us we're on the right track. When the cell is in harmony, it is joyful. When we are in harmony, it's joyful. And I would bl believe very strongly in the phrase that joy is the signature of God's life in us or the signature of life's life in us, whichever words you prefer. <clears throat> and this, I feel, is the greatest factor in all because when all of these things are in place, the fruit of all this is always a joy. And that's my wish for you. Thank you. See what I mean when I said walking encyclopedia? Thank you, Dr. Roy. Now he's mentioned that he will be here for, uh, offer himself for a workshop on Monday. And I haven't talked about that much and I would like to mention that now, how the workshop business goes on and how.